In any relationship, separation is painful and usually messy. Though if Britain votes to end four decades of EU membership on Thursday, it will be Brussels alone dictating divorce terms under an incredibly vague EU exit clause written in the belief it would never be used. Brussels remains tight-lipped about expectations. It's always wiser to uh, fix your attention on the first bridge you have to cross, which is the referendum, instead of speculating about what happens afterwards. Regardless of the outcome, there will be an EU leaders' summit a week after the result. In the case of a Brexit, leaders would discuss a one-and-a-half-year timetable for withdrawal, during which the UK could face economic limbo. During that period of 18 months, there could be an, an impact of, um, let's say, one, more than one and a half percentage point of growth less due to this process of negotiation. Britain would then have to negotiate extremely complex trade agreements with the EU, including thousands of regulations covering everything from food to banking. But if you look at Switzerland, we have negotiated for 30 years with Switzerland, with goodwill on both sides, and just it's objectively, horrendously difficult. It will remain difficult. It will take ages. The big question is, will Brussels take a soft approach to Britain? The signs are not promising. The European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker warned that deserters are never greeted with open arms. If Britain can ultimately renegotiate its treaties with Brussels, it might mirror Norway, which has to abide by most EU rules but has no power in shaping them. The only thing that's clear is that there will be no quick divorce for Britain if a majority votes out and that the EU and UK will be speaking frostily through lawyers for many years to come. Jack Barton, CCTV, Brussels.